Hi there, I'm Joey. I'm Jacob. And we are watching Star Trek for the first time. Last time on Star Trek, we found Spock. Or did we? Or did we? What if he's not really Spock underneath? Of course, he's really Spock. What if he's not, though? But, but he's Spock. Like, you know, I forgot to look up ahead of time, like, how, how long there was between, like, this film coming out and, uh, and last time. Oh, that's um, a good That's true. That's a very, very good point. How long were people wondering if there would, uh, like, like, what kind of follow-up there would be to this? Considering Kirk and his, all his closest mates, they're all presumably wanted. Yeah. So, like, okay. So, this came out in, uh, 86, which is two years after Search for Spock came out. Wow. Um, okay. Yeah, so, okay, so two years, that's actually, that's actually not bad. That's not crazy, no, yeah, that's not crazy yeah. for a Although, sequel. importantly, um, uh, we're now fairly distanced, I think, from the, the release of the original Star Wars trilogy, so I wonder if, like, that'll actually kind of allow Voyage Home to not feel for once like it's trying, like Star Trek is trying to compete with Star Wars in a way. God, I would hope so. This is also our last Star Trek film to come out before the start of Star Trek The Next Generation. Oh. Um, yeah, this is the last time that these guys were, like, the current team. Right. Uh, which, actually, I'm just realizing that now, saying that out loud. That, that's, that's really weird. Um, so this is the last time that people, when they thought Star Trek, this was all they thought of. I mean, it, I imagine it still was early on in TNG's release. I, I would imagine. People still thought, like, oh, what, what do you say Star Trek? Something? They're like, oh, yeah, Captain Kirk, you know? Um, especially as, as far as, considering I know, like, like, I think TNG had a pretty rocky start, so... Um, I don't know. I guess we'll see. I guess we'll see. Larry Nimoy is directing again, which is kind of cool. Which is good, um, yes. Which will be interesting, actually, now that he's actually going to be presumably in it more. Um, yeah, I mean, so. he got away with it last time because he's in Because what? he's barely in it. He's yeah. in, what, maybe five minutes of the film? In total, yeah. yeah. Um, this time, however, presumably he's a leading he's a leading man. Yeah. Did I even say that we're watching The Voyage Home this time? I mean, people, people know what we're watching, but I it's feel like... It's you click I on feel the video. Like, I feel like I didn't say it, and I feel like I have to, because there's always we always make a big deal of like, oh yeah, the pre-episode or movie thoughts are me saying the title, but it's not really worth it with movies, is it? Like... I don't know. Fuck it. Anyway, we said gonna, it now. We're gonna get into post film thoughts in a second. We are about to watch Star Trek IV: The Voyage Home. Picture this, if you will. <laughs> the year is 1986. Star Trek is about to release its fourth movie, and in 1986, it is also the 20th anniversary of Star Trek's existence. Oh, I didn't even remember that. And they decided to go with Star Trek The Voyage Home. Which is a fucking riot, dude. Oh it my is, god. It is proper I am, good. I am in love with this movie. <laughs> We've talked a lot about, like, things that we'd watch on, like, rainy, comfortable days in Star Trek. Fun little episodes to like, ease our minds. This is, this is the perfect one. Mm -hmm. This is it. I've never watched, like, more comfortable Star Trek in my life. The feel-good movie of the year, if you will. Right. I, like, oh man, that oh, that was beautiful in so many fucking ways. Um, it was gorgeous film. Let's get the dead serious thing out of the way first. Yeah. Um, the film opens on a, de uh, on a dedication to uh, to the Chal Challenger explosion. Um, just nice to have there. Truly, like, just didn't expect that. Lovely to have. Didn't really occur to us. Glad I saw it though. Yeah. The film is like funny immediately though. Like, I at least found the opening bitchy Klingon scene funny. <laughs> like, I'm just think... like, how does Kirk keep getting away with this? And the Starfleet guy's just like, I don't fucking know, man. And he's just like... <laughs> That's it. That's how it goes. And honestly, same, man. Same. No, no, no. <laughs> he keeps getting away with it because of shit like this. Yeah, yeah. For every fucking... Federation rule that Kirk keeps breaking. He also saves an extinct species, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, um, Sarek's back, which is lovely to see again. Um, as is Amanda, uh, Spock's mother. Um, Who we haven't seen in a while. We've not seen in a long time. And uh, she kind of carries what, in, in my opinion, is at least the heart of the film. Because... Um, once one, again, one, one of my few gripes with this film, because I don't have many, but it, it's a pretty significant one, is that once again we're doing the Spock has lost his humanity and he's defined it again. In this case, it's literally like, oh, just give it time and his brain will work through it eventually, but like. The neurons will all connect there eventually. Yeah, but it's just, I, I don't know. 
You, you, you get immediately what's going for with the when when he's doing the, the the computer program thing at the start when he sees his, when he talks to his mother and does the how do you feel moment, um, and then by the end he's like yeah I feel fine. It's, it, it's a it's a great little moment to have there, um, but it does just arc me just that little bit that we've gone through this character development three times now, <laughs> two of which are in the movies. Yeah, and I do just wish I hope at least. For the last two movies that we don't go through anything similar, I really, really hope Unless that Unless we kill Spock off again, I don't think that's going to happen. One can hope. One can hope. Um, overall, though, and again, another one of my things that I'm that I'm a little annoyed by in this film, uh, it's just kind of like how much it disregards the character arcs of Wrath of Khan and 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 Search for Spock, uh, both in like writing out Savick really quickly, um, only getting uh, David Kirk's fucking son only getting like one mention in the entire movie, which is a nice scene, but it's only one tiny mention. Mm -hmm. um, there are just th things like that that I kind of wish just were focused on a little more. I'm not complaining really because. What I did end up getting in the film, I absolutely adored. We got... Um, yeah, I'm with you. I think... I I think what happened is they had to wrap up Wrath of Khan, Search for Spock, mm -hmm. all of that. We had to wrap up all of that. Yeah. And because we wanted to write and make a time travel movie about the conservation of whales. Yeah. Which... Which I'm... I was all for. Yeah. Which, correct me if I'm wrong, comments, just feels like a Leonard Nimoy-ass plot. Like, I know he didn't write the script himself, but he had a hand in the plot. He's credited as, like, you know, a story by Leonard Nimoy and whoever else. But, like, that feels like a very Leonard Nimoy thing. Just some of the few things I know about the guy. All right. Um, like, 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 he got his hands on the control, like, he got some hands on, he got his hands on some power. Mm -hmm. And was immediately like, what can I do? Yeah. Um, in addition to, you know, the, the Save the Whales plotline, which is really well handled, uh, it's a time travel story. Let's get there in a moment, though. I want to finish covering... Yeah. Before we just get into the hilarity that is the rest of the film. Um, uh, <laughs> I have in my notes here... I have some wild notes on this movie. Um, but I have here McCoy hits on Spock, and the bit where he just, like, starts <laughs> trying to, like, joke around with Spock again, and Spock is like, what the fuck are you doing, man? Um, right. <laughs> but, um... Uh, in that scene, McCoy says, um, you've died and come back. You've gone where no man has gone, gone before. before. And I thought to myself, I was like, Kirk's never said that out loud, has he? But it does create this hilarious visual image. It, 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 image in my head where, where Kirk just wakes up every day in his five-year journey, gets up out of bed, walks out of his door, or, uh, out of like his quarters, begins walking down the halls and does the monologue to the show every fucking <laughs> time. <laughs> And Space, he, the final frontier, as he walks down the halls, everybody hears it, and he shouts <laughs> as he arrives on the bridge to boldly go where no man has gone before, <laughs> sits down in his chair, Captain's Log. <laughs> <laughs> it's how most episodes began. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I really can't imagine it any other way at this point. <laughs> a five-year journey where every day begins with the show is monologue. <laughs> to, to, like, just to know that McCoy knows that line, I'm just like, he has to have heard it. Right? That's the only way that makes sense. Anyway, um... So yeah, humpback whales. That's where we're actually going with this. They apparently went extinct in the 21st century, was very, which was a very real fear at the time. I learned, I looked into it a little bit as we were watching. I was like, wait, no, the humpback whales are still around. Maybe because of this movie? I'd say, <laughs> I'd be very curious to know the impact this movie had on whale conservation yeah, efforts. Yeah, I mean, we do, we do we, like, just in our, our general fascination with the impact this this show, this franchise has had on the world at large, specifically the TOS and TNG stuff. Um, somebody like DeForest Kelly inspired real people to become doctors in his time. Um, um, I would not be surprised if a film like this, like, genuinely spoke to some people. I think that that's really cool. So um, let's talk about why we need to find some extinct whales. There's a pro that's giving off what I thought was just the sound effect it was having. Mm -hmm. But you thought whales. You're like, oh, no, you thought dolphins at first. I thought dolphins yeah, at first. Because they started playing it, like, over some sounds. Of, it's like, got some distortion. Yeah, it's got yeah, some distortion. Yeah. And once they clear it, so in the movie, they start clearing up the distortion. But it's not totally there yet. I'm mm -hmm. like, that sounds kind of like dolphins. Yeah. That wasn't too far off. Yeah. And it's, and the probe is, like, draining all the power of everything. Yeah. It's ionizing the atmosphere of Earth, I think they said. Mm -hmm. Trying to raise the ocean levels, I think it was. Mm -hmm. And they're like, oh, it's whales. 
How do we get whales? Oh, we'll just use the naked time time travel. Which I love. I, first of all, I love the scene where, as the plot started to sink in with us, we were like, no fucking way. Let's go. I didn't know what to expect going into this. Um, I love the bit where like McCoy is like, time splaining how stupid this all sounds. Yeah. Um, just a great moment. Um, but the point is, yeah, we, we, we fucking do our slingshot around the sun bit from the naked time, uh, which was only used like one other time, I think, in TOS, if memory serves, uh, in, I think, in Tomorrow's Yesterday. Tomorrow's um, Yesterday, yeah. And now we're here. We do the same thing, which they don't properly explain. I feel like it only really makes sense if you've seen the naked time. Right. Like, for us, it was like, oh yeah, time travel. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. I'd love to know what someone who's only ever experienced with TOS is the movie stinks. Yeah, but then, like, for some reason, Nimoy decides to direct the scene, like... I don't know, like, Kirk is tripping balls. He, like, <laughs> he, they, they go back to Earth, and, like, he's seeing, like, these weird, like, stone, morphing stone structures of his friends as he hears their voices. It's really bizarre. And they all have dialogue, like, end of the humans, end of the human, end of the human race. Yeah, it's, it's really weird. And I don't think any of those lines are ever said otherwise in the movie. Yeah. I could be wrong. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, the point is, time travel. Yeah, on all, uh, all this is to say, our seven main characters, Kirk, Spock, McCoy, Scotty, Ahura, Sulu, and Chekhov, they have all landed in 1986 San Francisco. Hilarity ensues. Hila it's Hijinks ensue, if you will. It is um, beautiful. <laughs> I love it. First off, we get this really nice little moment where Sulu says he was born in San Francisco. San, San Francisco. And like George Takei just plays the scene like really nicely. Just, it's, it's this beautiful moment of reflection. Um, it's cool. But then, like, you realize what the tone is going to be going into this. The second that's, that, uh, that Kirk that's is like, oh, they've never encountered extraterrestrials. And Spock just rips off a piece of his robe and ties it around the top of his head, covering his Vulcan ears. And we're like, and, and then it really said, for me, when it's the two garbage guys. Yeah, yeah, the garbage guys are, they, they, the wind starts kicking them around. <laughs> They're two garbage guys. They're talking about, one guy's like, oh, I fight with my, like, my wife all the time. They're like, why do you? I like the way she fights. Yeah. And then a garbage can gets smushed. They take off i'm like okay yeah um so hearing pop music in star trek is really fucking weird i don't it's so bizarre i just i, I don't get it I don't, i don't ever be able to wrap my mind around that it doesn't belong here so <laughs> there's there's three teams mm -hmm. everyone's doing there's three teams of people there's kirk and spock kirk and spock who are going to find whales mm -hmm. there's a her and Chekhov who are going to find a nuclear weapons nuclear vessels nuclear vessels <laughs> and then there's uh mccoy scotty and uh suit who are all in charge of the aquarium yes for for the whales yeah they eventually get split up anyway but that doesn't matter anyway um but kirk's like oh my god they still need money here so Kirk goes to a pawn shop and pawns off what is like a set of pair of glasses that McCoy the, yeah, gave him. Yeah, McCoy gave him last film. That was right, yeah, the antique, yeah, that's okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, so he, uh, it was, I think it was Rathi Khan, actually, because um, that was his birthday. Oh, his birthday, yeah. so two movies ago. Yeah, um, so he pawns those off, he gets $100 for it, um, he's, he's like, he's like, don't spend it all in one place, he gives it all, gives, uh, passes it around. Um... Again, I, 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 the only way I can describe this is hijinks ensue. Um, there's this fucking hilarious scene Beautifully, it is written as uh, as as Chekhov and Ahura go we're just asking around the street, asking a police officer, and random civilians around. We're looking for nuclear vessels, and it's just because they they, they so need they need flooding. what like high density particles to fix the dilithium crystals. Mm -hmm. I, I can't just... believe I can say that sentence. <laughs> But, uh, but yeah, there, there's that. There, uh, there's the bit where uh, Spock and, and Kirk are like on the bus and he neck pinches the fucking guy with the loud ass <laughs> boombox and everybody on the bus applauds. <laughs> it is the actual version of and, of, and everyone, and, and everyone applauded. Applauded. <laughs> Shit that never happened, Land. Um, <laughs> but it actually happened. Um, <laughs> uh, Kirk and Spock go to the Whale Museum. They meet uh, Jillian, uh, who's a tour guide there pretty much i think an actual doctor she, she's a doctor who's yeah. also a tour guide yeah it's weird she knows a lot about whales is the point um and spock at one point like jumps into the pool and starts like communicating with the whale it's funny as hell um and uh, and and somehow uh this like also inspires jillian to like go track them down afterwards and like find out what they actually wanted with the with the whales yeah because well at first she thinks they're just crazy people yeah which they are which oh which they are <laughs> Meanwhile, Chekhov has found the Enterprise, the USS Enterprise, which, which is a nuclear vessel. <laughs> and we had a thought immediately, like, if that had to be a real ship. If that was a real thing, it would be named that probably because of Star Trek. 
That is such a weird, backwards way to think of anything. Yeah. Um, yeah, just funny as hell. I love that. Um, oh my god, McCoy and Scotty. Holy shit. The whole bit at the at the plexiglass, at the plexiglass place, place pretty much. <laughs> Dude, oh my god. Such a funny scene. James Duhon is on fire. Um, I was like upset for quite a bit of this film because any film that sort of shafts to force Kelly for the most part I would be upset by. It was made up for later. Uh, much, yeah. Oh, so made up so, for so well. Um, yeah, so good. Uh, Sulu steals a fucking helicopter like the legend he and is. And then he isn't seen for most of the film. <laughs> yup. Um... Scotty makes a formula for this guy at the plexiglass place to, for like thinner, more like le like more environmentally safe plexiglass. Pretty I, much. I joked that it's on an Apple II, and I'm pretty sure that would make the Apple II explode. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, I do. I do love the bit though where like Scotty's like trying to talk to the computer, talk to the computer, and of course like I oh, know it's your hands with, like the mouse. I think if he starts talking into the mouse, yes. <laughs> funny as hell. I love it. Um, uh, let's see, um, oh my god, the, the, the dinner scene when, uh, with, with Kirk and, and Jillian, um, when he tells her the truth, and of course she doesn't believe him, because, you know, classic, whatever. Right. Um, I don't know, just funny. It's good stuff. He, he, that, that whole scene's actually pretty great. He, like, he, not, like, yeah, not just on the comedy level, but, like, Shatner gets some great movies. Oh, there, sure, too. like, he gets to actually act, he's good. Yeah. He, he has to pretend to hate beer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, and then Walter Koenig fucking steals the screen when he gets captured by the guys on the USS Enterprise. Um, and, uh, and, yeah, and Chekhov is, is, is caught by these, uh, these soldiers, and he's, like, interrogated, and he gets to jump on them, but his phaser is, does, isn't working right now, so he has to, like, run out of there. He fucking jumps off, or he trips, and yeah. he falls off of this dock, and, uh, and like gets, like, a, a concussion, pretty something. much. Like. <laughs> Shit took me so just caught me so off guard. It was so weird. Um, and then right afterwards, like as there, as Sulu gets like the the plexiglass tank thing for the for the whales, um, uh, Jillian like sneaks her way on on board pretty much um, by like latching onto Kirk. Yeah. Um, or no, sorry, that's afterwards. That's afterwards. But, but it's not too see, far off from see, what you're talking gets, about. She gets she gets beamed onto the ship both times, which is still a Klingon ship, which I actually found really cool. I just yeah. kind of liked not. Well, I mean, it's the ship that they stole. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I'm glad they kept it. Yeah, but then like as they're there, um, who is it that learns about Chekhov's surgery? Is it Ahura? It's Ahura, and then like, and then she, she's just like, dude, he was caught by these soldiers. He like, he's going into surgery. He's probably gonna die. <laughs> <laughs> we just, <laughs> and I, it sounded almost serious, but I think both of our reactions was just was just laughing our asses off. Like the film had already gone so fucking far, and now it's just like, and Chekhov is going to die because he tripped on a dock. Like and <laughs> because we're in 1986, and because we're so used to Star Trek like medical things, mm -hmm. what would be normal medical stuff, infinite instantly looks like death yeah. at every corner. So like it, on this uh on this mission to the hospital is is, is Kirk Jillian they and go of to course Dr. McCoy goes. Well they were the hospital again. It was Mercy Hospital. Mercy Hospital. Yeah. Okay. I'm pretty sure it's the same place where the seventh doctor died. I think so. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> but uh McCoy just Divorce Kelly fucking crushes it in this scene. It's it's this whole bit where he's just like looking around at all the primitive medicine and technology around him and just just putting everyone in their fucking place. He passes by this old lady. She's like, and he's like, what? dialysis. And he's like, fucking lunatics. Take two of these and call me in the morning. <laughs> we later see her like being wheeled down the hall. She's like, I'm fucking fine now. I got a new liver. The doctor <laughs> saved me. Crazy as hell. I love it. The McCoy gets to save Chekhov. <laughs> In the most badass scene, like, oh my god, it's so good. I just, mm, I love it. I love it so much. I love to force. And, and, and I said at, at, at that point, I was like, you know what? I want a a, a, a Doctor McCoy show where he's in the past. Yeah, where it's basically house, house, <laughs> but Doctor McCoy. Yeah. <laughs> And, and um, Spock needs to be his, like, his physician friend. He needs to be Wilson. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> but then, okay, so then we get Chekhov out of there. Then they then get Jillian sneaks onto the ship. Um, then we get the whales. Okay, Kirk fights the whale hunters in the funniest way possible. He, right. The ship is invisible, and these whale hunters are, are, are going after the, the two whales that have been released into the ocean. Um, which... The fucking response time on that. Like, they, <laughs> these guys are just waiting out, out in the ocean for these guys to be released. They're like, any day now. <laughs> um, any moment. But I love it. Just, it was just the funniest visual to me. Just the, the Klingon, They shoot the harpoon. Yeah. Hits the Klingon ship. They 
uh, they turn off the cloaking device. They see, this, okay, nope, we're out of here. It was, just, it was just the funniest visual, just the way it towers over all of them. Reasonable reaction on the hunters. They're part. immediately like, turned, turned. Yeah, yeah. I think my favorite part was the wide shot of showing how slowly the ship is actually oh, yeah. turning. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I love the Spock makes a guest scene. I thought that was great. Mm -hmm. And I just, I don't know. <laughs> Part of me knows that it's William Shatner's actual personality, but like the, the just the way he is a complete and total dick to Spock in that moment, he's like, good, he says a good thing, you're making a guess, you know? Um, just the funny Like, moment. and I mean, in the movie it comes off like Kirk is being kind of a dick too. Yeah, oh totally, totally. But then we go back to the future, we, we slingshot around the sun again, and, and the whales are released. And Jillian's still there. Yeah, oh yeah, so Julian gets taken to the future then, and... By uh, making a very valid argument, if we're honest. Yeah, yeah, because like, you take the whales to the future, who's going to know how to take care of them, really? <laughs> like, right. Presumably, the last 200-ish years, there's been no one really concerned with how to take care of whales. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, so uh, uh, they release the whales, the whales are happy and all that, and it, it, it deals with the probe and all that, and then they play around in the water, and Kirk throws Spock in the water, and it's a funny little And you movie. can see... Leonard you can see Leonard Dubois, <laughs> like... Wanting to like laugh and play like the rest of them, but like he just has to write something like, oh, know Spock. Spock is confused by all this. He's it's yeah. weird, but like you, you can actually see that moment of like being fun in the water. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, just a funny little moment. But then we still have to deal with Kirk. The, Kirk's the, the, uh, prosecution. The, the consequences of my actions. Yeah. <laughs> Which, like, the second the scene starts, happens in the last ten minutes, you know they're gonna get fucking, uh, Harry potter Sorcerer stoned out of this. Like, you know how, like, every one of those early movies ends with <laughs> Dumbledore being like, you know, oh, it, yeah, sure, you guys did a lot of shit, but, like, you're fine, really? That's, it's gonna be I mean, scene. my favorite example is Sorcerer's Stone, because yeah. it's like, every house objectively just did better, <laughs> yeah. but I'm going to arbitrarily give just enough points for Gryffindor to win. Yeah, and so that that's pretty much what happens here. Nine counts of, uh, uh are, are, you're being charged with, uh, with nine counts. Uh, yeah, how, do you, how do you plead? Guilty or whatever. And they actively did all those things. Yeah, but on the count of the fact that you're heroes... We'll only prosecute prosecute you on one of those charges. And only and only Admiral Kirk, who will, to my sadness be said, be a ship captain. Oh no, whatever will he do? <laughs> but everybody in the room knows what's going on. Kirk smiles, everyone in the everyone in the, the crowd around them is like, ooh, yes, that's fucking good. They literally applaud him being demoted. <laughs> Which is, again, a trifle moment for the audience, but, like, come on. Like, everybody knows what they're doing. I want- I, I really was hoping the Klingon guy would still be there at the end. He'd be like, oh, fucking come on! <laughs> like, 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 <laughs> a fucking table in the corner. <laughs> I would love to have seen him back Because <laughs> it makes no sense. It really doesn't. Um, anyway. Um, Jillian gets transferred to, like, a space- uh, a science ship. Pretty much. Because she mean, has to catch up on 300 years of this. And it's just like, okay, sure. And then there's like this implied romance between them, which I did like genuinely see blossoming throughout the film. But also, it's written in such a way that's just like, we're never bringing this character back. Ever. It's not happening. Not unless like we rough it. And if like, not unless in like other films or like TNG stuff. Where, we, where maybe we hear, like, oh, Kirk has finally settled down. He's finally done. Yeah, yeah, but it'll all happen off screen. Yeah. Definitely. We are never seeing that actress ever again. Yeah. Um, but like I said already, I did love the Spock and Sars goodbye, and he says, you know, to tell my mother I feel fine. Brilliant moment. Um, and then we get the new ship, which has a beautiful interior. I love that. Um, I wonder, so, okay, so Next Generation started up the year after this movie came out. Um, yes, I remember you telling me this. I know, I think I vaguely know what the TNG bridge looks like, but... Does it look like that? It's not that, I don't think. And it's still in the Enterprise, right? I think it's a different model, like a later model of the Enterprise. You know how they get like the, what is it, the 1701A? A? So I think it's like one of that, but like a later letter, maybe? Mm. I think. Okay, I th I I think. Mean, I, that makes enough sense. I could be wrong. I, but, and I don't know when TNG... In Star Trek time is supposed to happen. Right? Yeah, I don't in know exactly. To but the movies mostly. Yeah, I think honestly that's one of the things I'm most curious about to see next time is like, it'll be a movie that came out I think three years into TNG's existence. Um, Ooh, they got they got into making stuff quick. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so uh, yeah, uh, I, I, just, I don't know. I don't know if I, I'm guessing the time period is different. It's, it's got to be different, right? Maybe it's Kirk actually lamenting he's 
his captain skills have been outshone. Yeah. I just wonder, like, what miserable inferiority complex hit William Shatner when all this happened? <laughs> like, he's no longer the star of Star Trek. You got Patrick Stewart for that. Leonard Nimoy has directed the past two films. What caused him to finally snap? I, I, all of that caused him to finally snap, I guess. I'm just be like, I'm directing the next one. It's my fucking movie. Like, <laughs> I just... I gotta know. And I know it's gonna be shit. I know. There's I'm, no way it's not shit. I'm right? terrified. It's I'm also, William Shatner's Star Trek movie, and it's not gonna be good. I'm also wondering... <laughs> I'm also wondering... How much of the film in Shatner's head mm -hmm. is a response to what TNG was doing? And as someone who has not seen TNG at that point, uh -huh. how confused as hell will we be? I don't know. I guess we'll find out. Like, great segue. <laughs> <laughs> I guess we'll find out. I guess we'll find out. <laughs> we'll find out next time when we continue the Star Trek movies. This was good, though. This was really good. This was a good I, I have some minor gripes, so, you know, nothing near as good as, like, Wrath of Khan. Wrath of Khan's still the best It one. is the bar. That is the bar. It's I a think, very hard bar. like, off top of my head, this would probably be second best, though. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's better than motion picture. Well, but and, and I'd say yeah, definitely better than, than Search for Spock. Search for Spock has other issues. Quite a few problems. Yeah, this so. just has less issues. It's a good time. It's a really good time. <laughs> so, um, certainly not the Star Trek film I thought I'd be getting, but definitely the one I needed right now. <laughs> yeah. So it's a great pick me up. Yeah. Um, all right. I guess that about does it. Uh, thank you all so so much for watching. Be sure to join us next time when we continue the Star Trek films. Until then, this has been Joey Morgan. I'm Jacob. Goodbye.